Wait a minute, has the GPU spec of the PlayStation 5 and perhaps even Xbox Series X really from an AMD source? <laughs> Man, this leaking game has certainly moved on. Back in 2012, it was all about hacked documents that were illegitimately liberated from the platform holders, but this time around, key information has emerged seemingly from AMD's testing labs. Last April, we saw the Gonzalo leak, where intrepid amateur analysts reversed engineered the 3D Mark benchmark database, revealing the existence of a Zen 2 Navi-based processor that was almost certainly work-in-progress Sony Silicon. But now, further leaks over the last few days not only back up the old Gonzalo story, but also deliver a remarkably rounded specification for what is almost certainly the PlayStation 5 graphics core. Adding further spice to this already highly unlikely tale, the leak also contains hints about the technical makeup of the Xbox Series X GPU as well. And there are some big surprises there. Now the scale and scope of this latest leak is remarkable and its origins are perhaps even more unbelievable than the Gonzalo story, leading many to believe that the entire thing may be a work of fiction. However, having looked into the situation myself and independently verified the source, the overwhelming evidence does seem to be that the data comes from AMD and hasn't been doctored. We're lacking context for sure, but the reasons to doubt this leak are somewhat thin on the ground. But before we go on, let's just step back a moment and remind ourselves that we're not system architects. We're not GPU hardware specialists. And while some of the data seems easy enough to fathom, let's not kid ourselves here. We're outsiders looking in, and the scope for errors in interpretation can never be discounted. But pressing on, from what I can gather, someone who may work for AMD's ASIC validation department used GitHub to store fragments of internal testing data from a range of work-in-progress Team Red projects, including its next-generation desktop and mobile PC APUs, along with some deep-dive testing on the PlayStation 5 chip, which now seems to have the codename of Oberon. Further details from the leak that I'm talking about here are being discussed on Resetera, and again, I've independently confirmed the details there as coming from the same source. Looking back over Twitter timelines from noted leakers, I've every reason to suspect that the source here may even have been in circulation for several months. Now, my understanding is that this data was stored on GitHub around six to seven months ago. While this may suggest that the testing is perhaps out of date, it's important to remember that when developing a microprocessor of the complexity we're talking about here, well, this is a multi-year effort. Testing and validating a chip to ensure that it meets performance targets and that it passes debugging. Well, all of this is a really lengthy process and it's likely that Making changes to the architecture of the chip at this point is basically impossible without introducing a massive delay and a huge cost penalty. Now, tweaks to clock speeds or accompanying memory are a possibility, and we saw something along those lines with uh, the original Xbox One. But the timeline we have here suggests that Sony already took the decision to push clock speeds higher by the time the leaked testing took place. The Gonzalo leak back in April suggested a PlayStation 5 chip that featured a Zen 2 CPU cluster running at 3.2 GHz paired with a Navi graphics core at 1.8 GHz. Slightly less concrete evidence linked to PCI Express identifiers suggested that AMD was referring to the GPU component as Navi 10 Lite, inferring heavily that the graphics setup would have the same 40 compute units as the PC-based Navi 10 part we find in the RX 5700 series, though there would likely be four compute units disabled for improved yields from the production line. The test leaks that have emerged in recent days tell us nothing new, nothing at all in fact, about the CPU side of the equation, but they do confirm 36 available compute units running at 2.0 GHz, which would give us a 9.2 teraflop data count would be much lower and the silicon itself significantly cheaper to produce. I would suspect we'd see a solution much closer to the leaked PlayStation 
place. The sparse data apparently includes mention of 3,584 shaders, which would translate to a frankly ginormous Series X processor with 56 active compute units. Uh, apparently no sign of clock speeds in this data, but if we assume that 12 teraflops is the target, 1680 megahertz gives you 12 teraflops on the nose with a nice round 1700 megahertz delivering 12.2 teraflops. If Microsoft was aiming for lower than 12, the shader count would be much lower and the silicon itself significantly cheaper to produce. I would suspect we'd see a solution much closer to the leaked PlayStation 5 configuration. Beyond that, not much else is revealed. The AI memory interface with some modules using a 256-bit interface, others at 64-bit. Uh, something of a mystery here which I hope to see cleared up in the fullness of time. On the face of it, the latest leak confirms a number of spec points, uh, but infers several more. To be Sources and those of Windows Central who are saying that Xbox Series X delivers 12 teraflops of GPU power, but he goes on to talk about other features such as VRS, variable rate shading and hardware accelerated ray tracing. But what's this? Memory paging magic? Warren then talks about how developers can load in data structures that are larger than GPU memory, citing improvements in terrain mapping and open worlds. All very interesting stuff, potentially game-changing in some respects. And there is actually weight to this, not just from Warren's tweets, but also from Microsoft itself. Flashback to E3 well, there we go, a simple with every major CPU or GPU launch. Then after that, we sat down for the Capsaia Sun presentation that was live streamed to everyone, where essentially we saw pretty much the same information that we'd seen in the editor's day delivered again. But that presentation sticks in my mind for two reasons. First of all, there was this almost comedic reveal of a petaflop epic Radeon Instinct server. Looking back at it now, the presentation is even more ludicrous than it was at the time.